morning. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you. At least somebody's here besides me. Hey, welcome to Big Beaver United Methodist Church this morning. You might notice a theme. See, the first song's about Jesus. Second song's about Jesus. Third song's about Jesus. There's another song about Jesus. We'll come back and hit Jesus again. Hillary's going to tell us all about her Jesus. So, you know, she's got my Jesus, she says. But, so I need you to stand up, because everybody needs some Jesus today. Join in us with our opening couple of praise songs. Number one, Give Me Jesus.
know that Jesus is our Messiah, the Lord of all. And we know that we just need a little bit more Jesus. A Jesus that loves us and cares for us. So give us Jesus anytime we are in this world. We need a little bit more Jesus. We want to say a great big hello and welcome to the homebound who are watching via YouTube. We welcome our visitors visiting with us. I have some special visitors visiting with us all the way from Flint, Michigan, Bethel United Methodist Church. We have Gwen, Linda, and Sally in the house, so we're grateful they're here this morning. And we have, if we have any other visitors visiting with us this morning, um, all visitors take the time to pick up a welcome bag at the Welcome Center before you leave. It's uh, for you, designed for you, and with you in mind, and so tells you a little bit about Big Beaver United Methodist Church, so we want you to have those welcome bags. The men's barbecue is coming to Big Beaver United Methodist Church on September 10th. It's a wonderfully delicious chicken dinner, and you don't want to miss it. You can enjoy your dinner here at the church or get carry out. Tickets are on sale in the Narthak, Narthak CIs or whoever sitting at that table. Also, we have a worship committee meeting tomorrow at 7 p.m. And then we also have a praise that I just want to share with you ahead of time this morning. We want to thank you to all Big Beaver members who came to the car wash yesterday to support Athens High School band programs. Thank you also to the trustees who allow the cars to be washed here, um, the car wash to be held here. With your support, we raised $2,000 for the program. Thank you, thank you, Joe and Becky who were there and they collected bottles as well and my car got squeaky clean, so anytime y'all want to do this, you can do it, and next time clean the inside as well as the out. <laughs> but anyway, we had a good time getting our cars washed yesterday. Thank you, Joe and Becky. Let us go to God in a moment of silent meditation. Gracious, amazing, wonderful, beautiful God, we come here on this great Sunday morning to celebrate the love of Jesus Christ, to celebrate the life that you have given to us, to celebrate and bless the Lord, O oh, my soul, and all that's within me, bless your holy name to thank you, Lord, for your goodness and your mercy, to thank you, Lord, for your grace and your forgiving power. We appreciate the Word of God, which is our instruction book that guides us along life's journeys. We appreciate the love of Jesus Christ that you have given to us so that we may be inspired to grow more and more like you and less and less sinful, and less and less like us. Help us, O oh God, to be encouraged on this morning and inspired and filled with your holy presence as you dwell amongst us through the love of the Lord and through the power of the Holy Spirit. We thank you for this great day. In the name of Christ, we pray. Have 
your way, oh God, in this worship service here at Big Beaver and in worship services all around this world. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Please join us in the worship house of the Lord. Well, you can stand up. Come on, let's go. We get more praising that way. There's joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord today. And we won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. Our God is surely in this place. And we won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord today. And we won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. Our God is surely Shout out your praise. Good morning. Can I have the children come forward? Hi, guys. How are you? Your summer going well? That S word starts in just a few weeks, doesn't it? School. Are you excited? No. Are you excited? You are? Well, you're in your last year of elementary school, aren't you? That's exciting. So, I can tell you too, I'm not ready for my kids to go back yet. It seems like summer just flew by too quickly. All right. What are these? Keys. Yeah. What, do you, what kind of keys do you think I have on my key ring? What type of things do you think I might have on there? And that's for my car, the fob. House keys. Well, actually, this is my car key. It's different. We don't, I just push a button. We used to have to put keys in, but not anymore. So, yeah, so I have lots of different keys. Let's see what I have. Wow. So this one, this kind of strange looking one, is a key to Mr. Joe's, one of his family members' house, just in case. This is the key to my parents' house, just in case. This is the key to the church. I got to get in the church. This is the key to our storage locker. This is the key to my house, the garage key. This is the key to our front door. And then, of course, I have all these wonderful little key things, to, or little tags. Thank you. To, you know, for shopping. Oh, actually, there's three library cards on there. Mine, Annalise's, and Maddie's. And then a couple other for grocery stores. So, but, you know, most of us use keys every day. Yeah. Except during the pandemic. I forgot how to use keys except to get in here. And now every time I go home, I try to use the church key on my house. Because <laughs> for the longest time, I go home. This one was always home. So... So now it's strange. I have to try and remember which one's my house key. But anyway, so we all, we're going to talk about keys today. And it's a key that maybe some of us never even think about. And that key is called faith. Now faith isn't a key that's made of metal like these. And there, it's not on my key ring. But it's a very important key. And probably the most important. Because it's the key that unlocks the power of God. Our Bible lesson today tells about a woman who shows how faithful she was. Now, there's a woman named Ruth, and her husband died. And Ruth could have chosen to go off on her own and create a new life for herself. But instead, she chose to stay with her mother-in-law, Naomi, and to follow Naomi back to her home country. And you see, Ruth didn't know how things would end up. She just needed, she knew she needed to have faith and to be faithful to the family of God that he had given her. And because of her faithfulness, God took care of her. 
Faithfulness often means that we need to put our trust um, in others first, and then staying loyal and true to family and friends and other loved ones. It means trusting that when we are faithful, we honor God and we allow him to work in our lives. There's a song that says, my God is so big, so strong, and so mighty, there's nothing my God can't do. Let's hope we always remember this so that we can be faithful to God. Let's pray. Dear God, help us to remember that no matter what obstacles we may face, our faith in you is the key that unlocks your mighty power. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, let's head off to junior worship. See me, I can get out. Can we now have our ushers to come at this time and we're going to have our moment of prayer by Mike. Good morning everyone here in the sanctuary and those of you worshiping with us at home. Uh, my name is Mike Emmons and I will be um, leading this offertory prayer. So if you could all join together with me, please. God, we thank you for the gift of music and for gifted musicians. We are grateful for this and every opportunity to sing your praises. Even if we do not play a musical instrument or tend to sing off key, our offerings of time, talents, and treasure can help give others reason to give thanks and praise to you. Please bless our efforts and multiply them to your glory. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen.
take my cross to Calvary, pay the price for all my guilty. Who would care that much about me? But let me tell you about my Jesus. He makes a way. Shared the joy of visitors visiting with us this morning. That's a joy. Any other joys? Yes, Connie. <clears throat> I just wanted to say um, thanks for the prayers for travel for me and my son. We went to Chicago for a visit, and everything worked out well, and uh, the drive was good. Thank you. Safe travels happen, hey. That's good, Connie. Glad you enjoyed it. All right, Diane has a joy. Yes, yesterday was Larry's birthday, and we had a nice lunch at Schumer's. Oh, Larry, it was your birthday. All right, happy birthday, Larry. <laughs> All right, anybody else a joy this morning? All right, do we have any prayer concerns? My friend Kathy Sherrill's husband died this morning. I'd like prayers for her family. And what's her name again? Kathy Sherrill. Kathy Sherrill? Yeah. Okay. Anybody else? Prayer concerns? Connie. Yes, my uh, daughter-in-law um, just was diagnosed with COVID, so prayers for um, a quick re uh, response and getting well soon. And what's her name? Oh, Susan. Susan. Diagnosed with COVID. Anybody else? Larry. While we're talking about birthdays, Glenn Sheffer had a birthday on Friday, and we want to be thinking of him, keeping him in our thoughts. He's permanently in a uh, senior care home. Glenn Sheffer, birthday. So Glenn Sheffer had a birthday on Friday. All righty, anyone else? All right, then let us go to God in prayer this morning. Gracious and eternal God, we are coming here once again to give you praise, honor, and thanks. Thank God for our visitors who are visiting with us this morning. Thank God for the car wash and the success of it. Thank God for safe travels for Connie and her son who went to Chicago when she went to Chicago. Thank God for Larry's birthday and Glenn Shepherd's birthday and all birthdays in the month of August. But in the midst of it all, we still have concerns. We ask, first of all, that you will forgive us for anything we have done, said, or thought that was not in line with you. 
And then we pray that your spirit would be with Kathy, Cheryl, who lost her husband this morning. And then also with Susan, who's been diagnosed with COVID. And then also we continue to pray for those persons who have had COVID and have some residual effects because of it. Or we also pray for those persons who are suffering from the virus monkeypox. And we also pray for those who have been in a flood and struggling to recover and gain back a new life surrounding or coming back from the flood. And so we ask, oh God, that your spirit of healing, deliverance, salvation, comfort, peace, love, and joy will be experienced in these moments. In the name of Jesus Christ, we continue to pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We've come to the uh, time of our worship service um, for the Old Testament lesson and the Gospel lesson. And it's always a pleasure to be up here once again with you folks here in the sanctuary and you folks at home um, sharing the word of God. Now let's hear and meditate upon the words found in our Holy Bible from the Old Testament. This is from the book of Isaiah chapter 9 verses 6 and 7. And if you would like uh, in your pew Bible you can turn now to page 638 and uh, follow along if you so desire. Here's the word of God. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us, authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onwards and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. And now if you could all stand as you were able for the gospel lesson which is from the book of Matthew, chapter 1, verses 18 through 23. And if you care to follow along in your pew Bible, it's in the New Testament section on page 1. Now the birth of Jesus the Messiah took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been engaged to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. Her husband Joseph, being a righteous man and unwilling to expose her to public disgrace, planned to dismiss her quietly. But just as he had resolved to do this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Look, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. 
This is the word of God for the people of God, and all the people say, thanks be to God. Oh, see, some of you are catching on. Look at you. Stand. You know we're going to sing. Stand back up. You'll catch on something new.
won't you go to God with me in prayer this morning? Gracious, eternal, everlasting, omnipotent, omniscient, omnipresent God of the universe. We come this morning with great expectation in our hearts, praying that the Spirit of Christ will minister to the people of God here, who hears this time of preaching and sharing and the gospel and breaking the bread of life to the people of God. May every heart be ministered to, encouraged, and inspired, and help us to get to know Jesus all the more. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Story is told about Elizabeth Keckley was a slave in Missouri before the Civil War. Her greatest desire was to purchase freedom for herself and her son. Her, her owner agreed that if she could raise $1,200, she could gain her freedom for her and her son. Keckley worked at us as a seamstress and came up with a plan to go to New York and worked there to raise the money, but her owner feared that she would not return. Instead, some of her wealthy clients in St. Louis contributed the money she needed, and Elizabeth Keckley's price paid the price for her freedom as well as her son's. She moved to Washington, D.C., where she counted Mary Lincoln among her dressing making clients. Without the help of someone else, Keckley would have never been able to purchase her freedom. All of us were enslaved to sin with no hope of ever gaining freedom. In mercy and compassion, Jesus gave his life for us purchasing our salvation by shedding his blood on the cross. We are now free from sin, but that freedom does not mean that we can do whatever we want. Instead, we are to live how Jesus wants us to live. Live a faithful, committed, obedient loving life with Jesus Christ. You see, salvation is not a rubber stamp to do any and everything you want after you receive Jesus and accept him in your heart. You have to walk the walk and talk the talk and live the life that Jesus wants us to have. So I ask you this question this morning. Two questions. Who is Jesus Christ to you? Is he A, God, or B, man? That leads us to our next subject of our series, Staying Rooted in Jesus Christ. We must know who Christ is and understand he is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, and all that's in between in your life. So far, we've been looking at the basic beliefs of the Christian faith in this sermon series, Staying Rooted in Jesus Christ. You see, we're trying to stay rooted in the Bible, in Jesus Christ, and to gain a better understanding of what it means to be a true blue Christian. So today's topic is Jesus Christ and who is he to you? So what's your answer to my question? Was Jesus God or man? Some of you say he was both. The answer is right. He is both. You see, Jesus is like any, unlike any person who ever lived and whoever will live again. 
About 2,000 years ago, God physically entered our world. He walked and talked and ate and slept amongst us. Because God came in the person of Jesus Christ. And Jesus is fully God and fully man. He's not a 50-50 mix. Like I have a mixed breed of a puppy that's been keeping me up all this week. Happy yes, happy birthday to me and to my mom. You know, he's half miniature golden doodle and half poodle, you know, and so that's that 50-50 mix, but Jesus is not a 50-50 mix. He's not sometimes God and sometimes man. He was and is 100% God and 100% man all of the time. And all the time we need to understand that Jesus was fully man. He was totally and completely a man. And there was a miracle that took place before Jesus was born. Matthew 1.18 says these words. This is how the birth of Jesus the Messiah came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph, but before they came together, she was found to be pregnant by the what? Holy Spirit. That in and of itself is a miracle. We all know how what it takes to be pre become pregnant, and it's usually with a man and a wife becoming pregnant. But in this situation, it was Mary and the Holy Spirit's interaction with her. There's some unexplainable, miraculous stuff going on here. But there is no doubt that Jesus was born from a human woman. He was born just like me, just like you. He's, his ordinary birth affirms he's human. Yes, Mary did go through birthing pains and had those moments of birthing situation where she had to push and in order for the baby to become alive, she actually gave a physical birth, not C-section, not any other way, but a physical birth that actually happened. So Jesus has a human body just like us. Luke 2, second chapter, verse 40 says, And the child grew and became strong. He was filled with wisdom, and the grace of God was on him. When Jesus was a child, he grew just like any other child. He grew in wisdom and stature and favor with God and man, according to Luke, the second chapter, verse 52. And he got, as he got older, he grew in statue and in height. Jacob's well was there and Jesus was tired. He was from his journey, sat down by the well. Jesus got tired just like we do. Has anybody ever been tired sometime? As a matter of fact, some people said, I'm tired now, so I'm taking me a little preacher's nap. And, and sleep during the sermon and wake up and walk out and say, Pastor, that was a good sermon. <laughs> I know it was because you slept right through it. <laughs> After fasting 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry. According to Matthew, the fourth chapter, verse 2, Jesus got hungry just like us. Jesus got thirsty just like us, later knowing that everything has now been finished so that scripture will be fulfilled. Jesus said, I am what? Thirsty. While he was on the cross, he became thirsty. The scriptures validate and verify that Jesus was fully human like us. 
He says, look at my hands and my feet. It is I myself. Touch me and see. A ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see I have. You see, Jesus rose from the dead and he had a physical body just like us. His body no longer got tired and he never died again, but bit, it was a physical body. He was able to do things and appear places whenever he wanted, but he still had a body when it's, and was touchable and recognizable. This is the moment in which he was, had ascended into heaven and had come back to visit us and over 500 people saw Jesus in the resurrected body and that validates the fact that he in fact was a part of a resurrection experience, another miracle, but that physical body actually came back and in, in reality, we too will have a resurrection experience because in the second coming, Jesus is coming back again and we too, if we are dead, will be resurrected unto the Lord so that we can have that eternal, everlasting experience in heaven with the God that loves us so. Jesus had a mind like ours. Jesus had to learn to walk, talk, read, write, eat, just like us. I wonder what was some of Jesus' favorite foods. It might have been hummus or grape leaves. Anybody had Mediterranean food before? Or olives? or salad, or fatouche. We don't know, but all we know is he had to learn how to eat just like us. Jesus felt emotion like us. When Jesus heard this, he was amazed and said to those following, truly I tell you I have not found anyone in Israel with such a great faith as the man who knew that his daughter would be healed just by the words of Christ. He was fully banned because he wept. In John eleven thirty five, 35, it said, Jesus could be sad, he cried, he wept. In John eleven thirty five, 35, he wept fiercely. It wasn't a few tears that came down his eyes, he actually wept over the death of Lazarus, but the reality he wept over the lack of faith that they had and the miracle that was about to be experienced because of what he did. There's one big difference between Jesus human and Jesus you, and the human you, he never sinned. There's a big difference between the humanity of Jesus Christ and our humanity. Jesus never sinned in his life. Can you count the number of sins that you have committed throughout this week? Throughout this month? This past year? Or even this morning? God made him who had no sin to be sin for us so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. Second Chronicles, Second Corinthians, the fifth chapter, verse 21. He committed no sin and no deceit was found, deceit was found in him or in his mouth. Why is it so important that Jesus be fully human. He had to be fully human to serve as our perfect, obedient, downright, perfect representative in order to die on the cross of Christ. Perfection was needed because back in the day, in order for the sins to be forgiven, 
the people had to bring an unblemished animal to the priest in order to sprinkle blood all over them. Now that is no longer needed because Jesus was the ultimate sacrificial perfect lamb in order for that relationship to be established between God and man. We no longer have to bring animals, which would be a bloody situation, to the altar. For there is one God and one mediator between God and mankind and humankind, the man Jesus Christ. He had to be fully human to be our mediator. He had to be fully human to understand our loves. So Jesus Christ is fully and completely human, but he's also fully God. Do you see anybody know how many miracles Jesus actually performed? Have you ever experienced a miracle in your life where you've seen somebody heal miraculously? Somebody was on their deathbed and all of a sudden they came back to life. Somebody who's been in hospice for so many years and suddenly they are out of hospice and walking around like nothing else has ever bothered them. Irv Jones, does anybody know Irv Jones? Was supposed to be in hospice for two weeks. That was way back in the month of March. Irv is still living today. He's not able to walk around, but he's still sitting up, cognizant, recognizing everybody's voice, and now he's still living and living well in hospice. Some people go into hospice and come out of hospice and still are just fine. Miracles happen every day. Jesus is fully human yet fully God in the miracles that he performed. He was fully human because of his human birth, but he was fully God because of his miraculous conception. Humanity and deity were united in a way that never happened. So there's no doubt who Jesus claimed to be. There's no doubt that every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus is Lord. So my question to you is, who is Jesus to you? Is he a healer? Has he ever healed you from anything? Some people can say even to this day they had COVID, was on their deathbed, and yet they were able to live and breathe and have everlasting life still today. Is Jesus your savior? Whereas you know that he has saved you from yourself, saved you from sin, saved you from anything that was destructive and downright disappointive to you. Is Jesus your Lord where you're going to bow down and say every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus is Lord? Make him your Lord, your Savior, your healer, your deliverer, your friend, your ace boom coon. I'm going back old school with that ace boom coon. Make him all those wonderful things to you. And then tell somebody else how Jesus has made a difference in your life. The most important and amazing miracle in the Bible was Jesus Christ. Because he became man and became the Lord of Lords, the Prince of Peace, the Wonderful Counselor, Emmanuel. God is what? With us. 
God is with you. That in itself is a miracle. By the Holy Spirit dwelling inside of you, that's a miracle in and of itself. Who is Christ to you? Make him your Lord today. As the doors of the church are open at this time, and the altar, you do an altar call today? And the altar is open. If you have not made Jesus your Lord, your Savior, the Alpha and the Omega of your life, the beginning and the end, we invite that you would come. that you know that Jesus is real to you. Or if you want to get to know Jesus in a closer way, you say, I know Jesus as my Lord, but not as a healer or deliverer. It's a good time to pray about those things. relationship with the Lord that loves you so. The altar is open for us to get a chance to know Jesus just a little bit better. an altar in heaven where we can always come and pray unto the Lord. Let us go to God in prayer this morning. Gracious and eternal God, we want to get to know you as our Lord and Savior. We want to know you as our healer and deliverer. We want to know you in a real and a special way like we've never known you before. Help us to draw nigh unto you. Help us to fall in love with you. Help us to be a God, I mean, to be a people that knows you from the inside out and outside in. So let us decrease and you increase in us. Let us be filled with the mercy and the peace of the Almighty God. And let us know you for ourselves and share the gospel with somebody else. In the name of Jesus Christ, we do pray. Amen, amen, and amen. All our 
Amen. Jesus, Messiah. 